is going to be our first look at EaterCap. It's a program I absolutely love. It's a uh, packet sniffing program. So basically, uh, what that means is that you run this program and you can grab traffic that's flowing on your local network. So you can see what other people are looking at on their computers, where they're going, you can grab that information, store it, sort through it later. And I'm going to do a number of tutorials on this uh, in the coming days or weeks or whatever. But um, this is going to be a very simple, very basic uh, look at EaterCap. And uh, it should be in your repositories for most distributions. Uh, so just use your regular package manager. And it's EaterCap, so it's spelt, oops, only two Ts, like so. And to run it, you need to either use sudo or root, because you need those type of privileges. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm just going to use EaterCap. And then I'm going to go dash capital T, which means text mode. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, mode of ARP, ARP, and then uh, I tell it what uh, network card I want to use. So if you have more than one card, uh, wireless or you know a regular ether, uh, ether plug, uh, you're going to specify it, specify it <laughs> this way. So uh, dash I, and I'm on my desktop, so I'm going to use ETHO. But that's all depending on your computer. If you're running wireless, it's probably either going to be ATHO or WLAN zero, uh, but if you're messing with EaterCap, hopefully you know what type of uh, your card is named as. Uh, otherwise, you're kind of moving too fast for yourself. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to use that card, and then we s tell uh, EaterCap what computers want to look at. So I can uh, tell it here 192.168.1.0 dot uh, one uh, dot eight is my local computer here the one I'm working on then I do another space forward slash one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one is my router so that's basically telling EaterCap to grab any information that goes between my computer and the router um, if you wanted to do the entire network so any traffic that goes from any computer to any computer or device on the network you can just leave those blank like that uh, sometimes that's good if you just want to try to grab everything but if the network's real busy uh, you can kind of bog down the whole network doing that with certain uh, features of EaterCap but right now I'm just going to do that I'm going to hit enter here it's going to start up the application it tells us right here that we're scanning all hosts on both ends so traffic going both ways and you'll start seeing traffic pop up here this is just my computer pinging uh, an address here uh, because I have a web browser open. Uh, but you'll see if I come to Google here, I'll do a search. I'll do test. And you can see right away it started grabbing stuff because Google was grabbing this information. I'll hit enter and you'll see more information going by. Uh, and you'll also see, look, X marks. That's my, uh, if it's a plug in for Firefox. So that's showing that uh, my Firefox was synchronizing my books, uh, bookmarks. You can also see other links that are available here. And a lot of this looks like gibberish, if we scroll up, because it's uh, binary code, which would be images and other binary files that are being transferred. Um, so it's a lot to go through at once like that. So what we're going to do, I'll hit Q to quit. If you hit Control-C to kill, it'll tell you that that's improper. It'll work, but Q is the proper way to shut that down. I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to add at the end dash W. And I'm going to give the name of a file that I want it to put all that information to. And I'll just call it test.cap for capture. So I'll hit enter here, and we'll still get the same stuff up on the screen. So you'll see now if I do a search for um, cats, you can see right away as I was typing, it was bringing up information that Google was transferring while I was doing that. I'll hit enter, and you'll see all the data going there. I'll come back over here, I'll hit Q. And when it's done shutting down, okay, what I'm going to do is I'll cat out that file that we just created, the test.cat, and you'll see all the binary information that it's stored in there. Uh, now, what I'm going to do next is grep that, and you'll notice if you try to grep in a regular way, uh, you'll get an error. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you the error. I'm going to go grep.http, so I'm going to search for any line that has HTTP in it, and hit enter. It's going to tell you you can't do that because it's a binary file. That's fine. 
we'll do dash A. That tells grep to look at this binary file as though it's a text file. I'll do that and you can see that you can now see links uh, that, that we captured as we were capturing that information. So any link that came up in my web browser or any web browser on the local network, so a uh, person sitting next to you in the cafe, or not that I'm saying you should go to you know, cafes and do this, but um, if my wife was searching on her computer or if I was searching something on my cell phone on the local network, I'd be able to see all the links that uh, were looked at during the time I was capturing. And that's just one very simple way. There's actually tools designed to sort through these packages and allow you to extract things and organize it better. And we're going to go through that more uh, soon. You can also see anything plain text, anything that's not encrypted shows up in this, uh, in this file. So any text that's on this page uh, should show up in this file. So that's our first look at EaterCat. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very useful, very fun tool that has many features, and I'm going to go over a few more of them in the near future. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Visit bashscripts.info or filmsbychris.com. The links are in the description for more video tutorials like this. Have a great day.